we're looking at science, uh, the material, is it toxic, what's happening in the ecosystem, and how we can figure out ways to get it out of the ocean. And that's something that's different within our group than, than others, because we believe there are ways that uh, mankind can understand and figure out how to remove some of this from the area. Main focus is marine debris in the North Pacific Gyre, which is an area northeast of Hawaii and uh, west of California, about four or five days by boat. It's not where anyone goes. It's probably the most remote ecosystem on the planet. The ships don't go there. Sailboats don't go there because there's not a lot of wind. And when people haven't gone there, no one's noticed this thing that's crept up on us. And what the problem is, is the currents that flow clockwise in that part of the ocean uh, basically capture anything that floats. I met someone who is very good with plastics and said, that, well, there's ways to remediate this and we can turn the plastic to fuel if we catch it. So all of a sudden we had a solution potentially if we could figure out how to gather it. No one really knew that this area, which literally is thousands of square miles and millions of tons of debris is out in the, in the ocean. And we're trying to use that awareness to then motivate change on land in the way we do things and bring different materials, better recycling, better policies, so we don't keep feeding that into the ocean every year. We are recognized by the UN as climate heroes last year. We are recognized by Google Earth for the work we did with our voyage tracker and video blogging. And we just got into the Clinton Global Initiative this year, which will be in September. And one of their new sub-themes is rethinking waste. So we have, a, we have a gravitational pull, if you will, or a vortex working in our favor because it's a big problem, gets people's attention, and that can help motivate change faster, I think, than if you don't have a, a big issue at hand. And uh, the problem is we don't know the damage this has been causing to ecosystem and marine life. There's plenty of evidence that everything from whales to jellyfish and all in between consume this, mistaking it for food. What we don't know is how much has died in the ocean in the past. My Wharton experience, I think, helped a lot with uh, global connections. Uh, one of the reasons I picked Wharton originally was because I thought it was the most international of all the business schools uh, in the U.S. with the, the foreign students. And I've worked overseas all of my life, and that has been a big uh, advantage and a compliment. So. Uh, I think my experience at Wharton and, and working in different industries has given me the ability to do this kind of project, which is really multifaceted. Uh, we're doing things with science, policy, innovation of materials, uh, remediation, recycling, uh, education, and, and no one single solution is going to fit. We need all of it happening together. And the network that Wharton provides uh, globally, again, this is a global problem. It's not one country. It's tragedy of the commons. There's no one owns the ocean, so we can't point a finger and say, "Hey, you, you government, you know, you fix it." We've all contributed, and so therefore, the network that Wharton could bring, through businesses, through companies who have better technologies or new processes, and funding, um, can be huge. Right now, what we're doing is the scale and scope where I can start to reintegrate with. Uh, a lot of the Wharton community, um, either who are in businesses or maybe even in governments around the world, and play a much bigger role. And, and I think we can really leverage that in a powerful way. So um, I think it's one of the best alumni networks around, and, and I hope to be able to tap it in, in a wide range of countries because it would be a great story for all of us if we do that. At the end of the day, the economy is a 100% subsidiary of the environment. And if we have no environment and no resources, there's no business. We've spent a lot of time consuming and making and consuming and making and growing. And, you know, instead of being carbon neutral, we need to be carbon, you want to say positive or negative, but you're giving back something, not just being neutral. And if we can be giving something back at the same time to the planet, that, uh, we've already taken a lot away. So we have a lot of catch up to do and I think there's great opportunities in that area.